Hey everybody, it's Aaron. Now I know you're used to hearing me tell a seven minute story every week. And every once in a while, I'll also share a special guest seven minute interview I've done. But this episode is a first. This is the first episode we've ever had where a guest has performed and recorded and then submitted their own seven minute story. And it just so happens that this guest is one of my lifelong friends. His name's Anthony Vorndren. We grew up in the same town together since we were like three or four years old, and we still talk on the phone to this very day. I really hope you have a friend like that, and if you do, you know how special that relationship is. He lives in Virginia, I live in Ohio, and I was just talking to him the other week, and I was like, dude, I love the stories we share back and forth. You should submit your own story, and I'll feature it on the podcast. And he was like, all right, let's do it. And so he did. And so he recorded this story titled Japan, and it was about this life-changing trip that he took to that country. But before we get to it, I wanted to let you know that if you had a seven-minute story that you wanted to be featured on this program, make sure and go to the website at 7minutestoriespod.com. That's the number 7, minutestoriespod.com, and pitch us your idea. The theme really doesn't matter as long as it's impactful, important to you, and you think others will enjoy listening to it, and obviously, most importantly, that it fits within approximately seven minutes. I look forward to hearing from you. And now, here's Japan by Anthony Vorndren. It's October of 2017. I have a once in a lifetime opportunity to go to Japan. Not only am I going to Japan, I'm going to Japan for my company, so all expenses are paid. How often do we get those types of chances in our lifetime? Well, it's not that simple. And let me explain. This is an interesting season, a a time, uh, if you all can remember, when North Korea was launching rockets over Japan into the waters in in front of Guam. Like, you have to be kidding me. The one time that I get a chance to do something so cool Um, And now I'm questioning it. Like, do I even want to go? Should I go? Is this a smart move? Friends and family are like, hey, man, like you should really think about this and maybe consider not doing it. And the question that's going off in my mind is, will there be another chance? And sometimes in life, you just have to go. Um, So I did. I jumped on a plane um, 6,000 plus miles away over 20 hours of total commute over the ocean. And I'll tell you what, it was not a a, a very relaxing uh, flight for me. Sitting there wondering, what in that, like, is something gonna shoot over the plane? Um, Am I gonna make it safe? What if we crash into the water? There's sharks, like, my mind is going. But I'll tell you what, you just have to trust. And I did, I trusted. And I got to Japan, I landed in um, outside of Osaka. And I'm thinking in my mind, I'm like, this should be pretty easy. I'm pretty capable and uh, independent. I can figure my way around. Guess what? That was not the case. Just being able to get somebody to help me find a cab was challenging. Um, But I, I enjoy a good challenge and I'm up for it. I'm excited. I'm jet lagged, super tired. And I start noticing in the cab ride, I'm, I'm looking out the windows. I got my headphones on. I got my sunglasses on. You know, I'm doing my thing. And I'm like, we're going away from the city. And, I'm, and I can't really communicate with the driver. Like, where are we going? My, the rental that my company put me in was like 45 minutes outside of the city center. And I'm going to have to commute into the city. My job is I record uh, legal proceedings. And... I'm going to have to like figure out a way to commute that far out. And, and I started to feel a little bit of nervousness kicking in at this point. Keep in mind, I haven't talked to anybody in over a day of commuting. So, you know, my family and friends, they're, they're eager to hear, did, you, did I make it? Am I okay? And I'm like, all right, I don't have cell phone service. I'm going to go to the rental and I'm going to get Wi-Fi and I'm going to contact people. Also, here comes another hurdle. The Wi-Fi is not working in the in the rental unit. So I immediately am like, okay, what do I do? So I'm waiting for my roommate to come. He's on the same assignment that I'm on. I have like a four hour window till he arrives. And I'm just like excited to see a familiar face. So I go over to a local little, uh, I think it was an H Mart. I don't know, something like that. And I 
connect to their like 10 minute Wi-Fi and I was able to make a couple calls and the the housing unit got back to me and they said, we'll have somebody out there in a couple hours, you're good. So I started to feel like, all right, I have a sense of peace at this point. Um, I get back, my friend shows up, uh, we're waiting uh, for the Wi-Fi people to come, pour a drink, make some food, we're just trying to just get settled in into this new adventure for the next three and a half weeks. And um, Wi-Fi people never show up, so we're ready. We're on the back porch just having a, a, a drink and just relaxing, and there's a knock at the door. Not only is there a knock at the door, it's 12 a.m., midnight. Like, who could possibly be here? Like, we don't know. I don't know anybody in this country. And um, I look through the peephole, and I see this older gentleman and this younger guy, and they're holding, like, a six-pack of beer, and, and they have a bag of chips, and I'm like, like, what is going, who is this? Uh, um, they, we let them in. We're like, let's do it. Let's, let's party with these guys. Like, they came in. They welcomed us to Japan. They were there to fix the Wi-Fi. Uh, they were unfortunately unable to fix the Wi-Fi. They needed to come back like a day or two later. But it was such a nice, you know, it was a really cool moment um, just showing the culture of the people in Japan and how welcoming they are. So they leave. And I'm like, all right, it's time to settle in. I'm jet lagged. I just want to go to bed. I just want to lay my head down. And of course, imagine this world. You see out of the corner of your eye, something go running down the hallway and under the door of my friend, his bedroom. I'm like, what could this possibly be? You know, like, it can't, it's not a mouse. I don't know. It's just like a huge bug. And I do not do well with bugs. So I knock on his door. We go in. We find... A cockroach, of course, like disgusting. I, I hate that. I hate that this is happening right now. It's freaking me out. I'm not going to be able to sleep. Um, things are just kind of taking a turn at this point. You know, I'm, I don't feel comfortable. I'm far from the city. There's bugs in here. Wi-Fi is not working. I can't make phone calls. I can't watch Netflix. Like this is a disaster. So I'm like, all right, remain calm. If we see any more, we're out of here. The next morning, of course, we see more cockroaches. We're going to take matters into our own hands at this point. Since our company put us up, we were told there was no hotels, like, anywhere. They were all booked. So I'm like, well, let's go. Let's just take the train and try to find a hotel. And we did. We found um, a really nice hotel in the Osaka City Center. And it was such a relief to just get out of that place with the bugs. I can't even begin to describe. Um, and then the gentleman and his dad, they ended up keeping in touch with us just to make sure we were okay. They knew we had a rough, we had a rough start. And they came and, and they took us out for the day for food and they took us to different historical sites and just treated us like just so, they were so welcoming. I can't, I'll never forget it. I'll never forget the kindness of these folks. And they really, they took a trip that was extremely scary in the beginning for me and they made it just so welcoming and, and I'll be forever grateful for them. They really did help make that transition smooth for me. Um, I spent three and a half weeks there, enjoyed every minute, got to explore the city. I started to feel very comfortable getting to know the area. Um, next thing you know, I, I'm on a, I'm in a cab and I'm heading back to the airport and just reminiscing on it. I remember just tearing up a little bit like, this scary place at first, this new adventure that I wasn't sure about, became, it felt like home. And I just, I just didn't want to leave. Seven Minute Stories is created and performed by Aaron Califato. Audio production by Ken Went. You can connect with Ken at media216.com. Original artwork done by Pete Whitehead. See Pete's work at petewhitehead.com. And lastly, I'm Corey Burse, and I coordinate the podcast. Make sure and tune in next week for another story.